All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Today is May 26th, and this is our, I don't even know, 9th, 10th, 11th um, support call for the, um, basically for the coronavirus um, crisis that we're all in, um, in different ways and from different places all over the world. <clears throat> and um, you all know that the call is recorded. You know that it will be posted um, on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, access, it will be accessible to the public. So if you don't want to be recorded, um, you can mute your camera, you can mute your, um, your microphone. Um, people will still see your name. And if you don't want that either, then just watch the recording later. Uh, you also know I'm not a therapist <clears throat> or a mental health person. We're not doing mental health here, as you all signed that before. So that's just my public announcement. Um, and as really, you just told us that you're feeling better in terms of letting your guys do their own grieving in their own way that makes me happy yeah it's a it's a big deal what you've been through and what you're still going through and this will not go away overnight that tension i had i, I and as you said really uh, like it was to the point i'm like i'm afraid to fall apart yeah and as long as we i allowed myself to fall apart if it's okay if it's necessary, then like tension went away and everything is much better now. Well, why would you not fall apart, right? When you lose two loved ones in a very short amount of time in such um, traumatic, under such traumatic uh, circumstances, that's a good, good time to fall apart. You know, I, I strongly believe that we really don't always have to keep it together. You know, sometimes we just can't, sometimes it's just too much. And it's okay to just open with open eyes, just go straight in and say, today is going to suck. And the next few weeks are going to suck and, and be okay with that. You know, I think resilience means that we're able to grieve without letting us um, put us under to a degree that we can't function anymore. Right. So, yeah. Good for you. Thank you. Thank um, you. I see Belinda is here as well. So we have a nice, nice group of people again today. That makes me really happy. That's wonderful. Some of you are muted. Some of you are unmuted. Usually, um, I think what I'm going to do is just open up the microphones for everybody for a minute. And then we can just say, you know, what's whatever is important for you right now, what you would like to tap on. And then um, unless you want otherwise... Um, we're going to mute everybody and I'm just going to tap with the person who would like to do some work. I think that's a good idea. That's what we did in the past. So um, I am going to unmute everybody. If I hear background noises, I will just automatically mute you because it's going to light up here a little bit. So we can uh, make sure that, that the quality of the call is, <clears throat> is okay. If you have muted yourself, then uh, there's nothing I can do about that. So you will have to unmute yourself then later. I see that uh, um, Rich, Mary, Charlie, obviously, are muted right now. So, all right. Nearest, how are you doing? Talk to me. Talk to me. What's going on in your life? How are you feeling? Clearly, Memorial Day weekend. Clearly, the... Um, you know, the social distancing has now a different, uh, is, is, we're in a different place with that. Some people are, some people are not, um, people are doing different things as a result. How are you feeling about all this? How can I support you today? Joan. Okay. Um, I went out finally. Okay. Strange feeling. I was afraid of being outside. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I've been going out my whole life. I've been living in the house for 70 years. There's no reason to be afraid. It took yeah. me three times before I finally get it, walked into the market. I walked up as far as past it, walked back down, didn't have the courage to go in at all. Uh -huh. took three days before I finally went in. And I can't understand why am I afraid of going into stores. Why are you afraid you can't understand? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've been in the house, I guess because I've been in the house, I don't know how many months is it now? I've lost track of days. Well, I can say since uh, February 12th is when we started being told that we had to stay in. And since that point, I really hadn't been out, out. 
I went as far as the mailbox. I never went down a few streets or a few blocks. And then all of a sudden, I'm out there. And some people with masks and some people without masks. So like, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And then I'm deciding with the masks, I'm breathing in my own bad air. Is that healthy too? You're not breathing in your own bad, bad air. No? When it's my no. primary case? No. Well, what would you be breathing in? That's just what people do. They just breathe. You're not breathing in your own bad air. You're just breathing. Yeah. Well, I'm breathing in the air that I just let out. No. No. No, that's, no of course not. Even though I have a mask on my face? Yeah, but you can breathe through the mask. You're not having plastic on your face unless you put plastic wrap on your face. Not you yet. are not yet. No, why would you do that? You breathe through the mask. I mean, yeah, it just filters out. It's like a coffee filter. The water goes through, but the, the gunk does not. And that's how the masks work as well. So the okay. air goes through. Of course. Look, okay. nurses work with these every day, all day in their face. It's all good. All right. Right? I mean, that's what a mask is for. It is supposed to protect you. All of Asia is wearing masks, right? And they never even think about it because it's just what they do. There's nothing wrong with wearing a mask. Okay. All right. But I do hear um, a, a fear around being outside. Is it a fear of getting sick? Is it a fear of trusting people? Is it, what's the fear? What makes you afraid? They're getting sick. I've been in the house hibernating to avoid getting sick. And now right. I'm going out and I'm encountering all these different people. But I hear two things. You say, I don't know if people wear a mask. If, if people are asked, I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know if that's a bad thing. Why do you not well, know that, Joan? That if they're wearing a mask? Why do you not know if that's a good or a bad thing? We've been told that it's a good thing to wear it. So why would you not, why would you think it's a bad thing? Maybe it's religious reasons. I have no idea because it's a lot of the people that happen to be a particular group of people in my neighborhood, other neighborhoods, obviously it's totally different. What do you mean by religious reasons? Uh, they're a group of, the Orthodox live in my neighborhood. Okay. And many of them will not wear the mask. That's their, that's their prerogative. I can't help for them. But I don't want to really get sick because... So, do you think the that's a good thing or do you think that's a bad thing then? I'm, I'm the trying to figure thing. out... It seems to go both directions right now. And we can certainly tap on that. But I want to know where you want to end up with this. Well, I feel it's a bad thing. I mean, if it's a good of humanity to wear it, so wear it. What's the big deal? Okay, and they don't wear it be for religious reasons because... I don't know why they don't wear it. I didn't ask them. Okay. So, so why do you ask. think then that it's for religious reasons? Not for religious reasons, but because that particular group of people decided that no, maybe it's not... I don't know. I can't speak for them. I don't know what's in the headlines, <laughs> but it happens to be them that's so doing... What am I taking up to this? Excuse me? So I'm, I'm trying to understand this right now. Is this really factual or is this a concern? Because, you know, the things we can tap on is, is how you feel and what you do. You know, yeah, if you're surrounded by a whole bunch of people who will not wear a mask and you don't feel safe, it's your responsibility to stay away. I will not go to a beach, period, end of story. Right? And I don't care if people wear masks or not. I'm not going to a beach because in case somebody doesn't work there, my immune system will not be happy about me. Right, so that's your responsibility. At the in same other words, time, not go out the hours that they're usually out, basically. Well, if you are far enough away, then then you can still protect yourself. Well, I try to go on the street or you know stay inside, depending on where they are. But if there are five or six of them together, it's kind of hard to do avoid. Do I feel? Something. Do I hear anger in your voice? Excuse me. Do I hear anger in your voice? Well, I just want to go down the street. I mean, can't you move over a little bit? I mean, I had to walk across the street. I had to walk across the street. It was easier. So am I, it's, uh, I'm avoiding people, and that makes me more nervous. Mm -hmm. And you are wearing a mask? Yes. Okay, what kind of a mask are you wearing? 
I don't know, the blue ones or the fabric ones? Cotton one. Okay, the cotton one or the paper ones, the surgicals. Okay. All right. Um, how would you like to feel? I like to feel relaxed when I'm out. Is that I don't realistic? like the fact that I am nervous when I'm outside. Okay. Um, I'm also, I don't know if that's true, but it, it's, it, it sounds to me like um, sticking to rules is extreme, is, is, is a really big deal right now. Is that, do I hear that? Well, it sure is. I mean, we're going to be the last, well, they haven't decided when they're even going to go to step one. In New York. You're yeah, in Brooklyn, I'm right? In Brooklyn. Yeah. And Brooklyn is, I guess, the same Queens is worse, and then comes Brooklyn, as far as people and problems okay. and people dying. Yeah. Yeah. So when you've been outside, where did, did you, did you just go outside for a minute and then came back in? Is that how you did it? Uh, no, I walked several blocks. I went as far as the park, but the police were fighting with a group of people. So I wasn't going to go near that scene. Yeah. So I went the opposite direction. Yeah. I guess Brooklyn is a little different than the rest of the world right now, but and some, some of the rest of the world right now. Okay. So, I mean, there is a difference between getting nervous and being responsible, right? right? So there's a difference between knowing what's right for you and being afraid of the world. Um, and there is also a difference between knowing what's right for you, seeing people who are not doing what's right for you, being super mad at them, and then kind of getting stuck with those feelings. True. Where are you at with that? What do you think is haunting you the most right now? Excuse me? I'm, I'm Which part of what I just said do you think haunts you the most? Not knowing what's right? Not... Um, well, what's right for me may not be totally right for you, depending on interpretation of something, right? No. In this case, it's really about you. So it doesn't okay. matter if it's right for me. It, my, I have responsibility for myself. Everybody does. Everybody does. So, so well, what's well, frightening me is the fact that I'm nervous when I've gone out all my life. I've never been nervous about going down the street. There could be a bunch of people standing on a corner. It wouldn't bother me. But now I'm, I'm afraid of going down what, that. Street. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of not dying? I guess. I'm sorry. Dying. Yes, but are you afraid of of you not knowing what to do to keep you safe? Are you afraid of other people doing something that makes you unsafe? What, what, is, what is it exactly? Well, I'm responsible for my own actions. So if they're doing something that's making me unsafe, it's my how I respond to it. So what would they do? They would come with six feet into your field. Right. I'll okay. go out, put out the garbage, and they're standing there talking to somebody and they're not about to move. So I have to back up and go back in the driveway. Until they move. Okay. And why would they not move if you ask them politely? Because they're talking to whoever they're talking to. This is New York. They don't even, they do what they want. Some people. Mm. Okay. How does it feel? Excuse me? How does it feel? That they're doing what they want? Mm hmm it's upsetting to me because I think it could affect me by the things I do. Yeah. Let's tap, okay? Let's see what we can do. Can anybody else relate to this? You can and cannot. <laughs> More or less. Yeah. I don't like people not wearing masks and uh, yeah. not obeying the rules. And uh, I also really afraid of people who believe in 
conspiracy theories. Yeah, and unfortunately, many people spread in our them out, and uh, they can become dangerous one day. I just read some posts from people that I used to really respect about a mask doesn't protect you. You shouldn't have to wear one. And these are people in the energy field, in our field. And I was so disappointed in them. Just really officially disappointed. Like you still are not understanding what we're actually asking you to do. It's just personal disappointment. And then they give you a huge big spiel about how you need to just boost your immune system. I don't know how much more blue eyed you can possibly be um, and how much more uh, ignorant you can possibly be. But um, I have lost all respect for these folks. And I, they will, they're going to have a really hard time getting my respect back. <laughs> Not that they ever try it, but it's it's just the way it is. So, Joan, my dear, I think we should, should tap with you. And I see Barbara's raising the hand there. Barb, what what's going on? Well, it's it's related. It's not quite the same. I I am risking going out now, and I do wear my masks. And when someone doesn't wear a mask, I just go around, etc. But for me, it's it's more of a couple people that I have to depend on for a friend or something, and. Um, there's been a couple incidences where they, they haven't had a mask on mm. and then I worry. Then, then I'm waiting like, okay, I got two weeks before I'll know if I'm going to get sick because I've been exposed. And, and yet I'm living in New Hampshire. There's in my case, not in Joan's case, you know, the chances of my friend um, who wears her mask when she's out, but she didn't wear it when I was with her. Um, and we were, you know, four feet away to help put up a screen house. My fears get crazy. They get out of control. <laughs> and I don't know what's, what's legitimate fear. I have no question if I don't go in the supermarket, someone shops for me, etc. And if I walk and I pass people, I have the mask. But it's with the close friends or the workmen that you need to, to work on your... <laughs> Your, your printer or something, and you think, oh my God, I let him in my house. What did I do? And so then- Okay, so I think we need to really kind of, uh, okay, I got it. It's all fear, <laughs> just like- Yeah, and we need to really realize which part of that fear is saving our lives and which part of that right. fear is just standing our ground. Right. And, you know, <laughs> kind of like it's disrespectful of you to treat me like this. Whereas at the end of the day, it's freaking us more out than keeping us safe. Yeah. Which part of that is absolutely solid, realistic, right? And and just, um, okay. So I have no idea we're going to do that. I think we should get started tapping, okay? So I'm going to mute everybody except from Joan. Um, and, uh, and then we just take it from there. Hold on for one second here. Okay, Joan, you can, I'm going to unmute you, but I cannot do that. You have to unmute yourself, my dear, bottom left of your screen. Now you're open. Now I should be able to hear you. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, karate to a point, even though. Even though. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. More than anybody will ever understand. More than anybody will ever understand. I've been trapped for years. I've been trapped for years. Trapped for years. It seems and, that way. <laughs> and now I'm trapped for months in my home. Now I'm trapped for months. In my home. In my home. And I'm very resentful in some ways. And I'm very resentful in some ways. But I have to deal with all this. But I have to deal with all this. After all that I've been through in my life. And of all that is influencing my life. After all that I have been through in my life. After all that has been influence in my life after all that i have been through in my all life. that i have been through in my life because the truth is i've been through a lot go slow i'm deaf not really <laughs> because the truth is that i have been through a lot but the truth is that i have been through a lot a whole lot more than people know about me a whole lot more than people know about me i have my stories i have my stories i have my life i have my life it's been difficult. It's been difficult. And I have been on my own more often than I should have been. 
I've been on my own more often than I'd like to. Than I should have been. Than I should have been. I had to, to rely on myself more often than I wanted to. I've had to rely on myself more often than I'd like to. It's never been easy. It's never been easy. And right now. And right now. I need others to protect me and keep me safe. I need others to protect me to be safe. And they're not. And they're not. Not everybody. Not everybody. And that's really hard for me to accept. And that's really hard for me to accept. And I have a lot of emotions around this. I have a lot of emotions about this. And I know. And I know. That at least some of those are very right. That some of those are even really right. And I don't know how to handle them. Didn't hear it. And I don't know how to handle them. And I don't know how to handle them. And feel safe. And feel safe. And do the right thing. And do the right thing. But I accept myself. But I accept myself. And I respect myself. And respect myself. For all that I've been able to overcome. For all that I have been able to overcome. And even though here I am. And even though here I am. And the stupid jerk does not step aside. And the stupid jerk doesn't step aside. Not knowing that he can, that, that if he has the virus. And if he has the virus. And he gives it to me. And he gives it to me. Which may or may not happen. Which may or may not happen. But it happened to others. But it happens to others. I can get sick. I can get sick. I can get very sick. I can get very sick. And I don't want to get sick. And I don't want to get sick. And my, my health depends on him or her. My health depends on him or her. And I just don't want to have to fight for that. And I just don't want to sacrifice for that. And I don't want to have to fight for that. Oh, and I don't want to, I don't want to have to fight for that. But it seems like I have to fight once again. But it seems I have to fight once a day. And even though this is happening. And even though this is happening. I love and accept who I am. I love and accept myself for who I am. Top of your head. It's very difficult right now. It's very difficult right now. Inside of the eyebrow. It was easy to follow the rules. It was easy to follow the rules. Outside of the eye. Stay in your apartment. Stay in your apartment. Under the eye. Don't go out. Don't go out. No sonopolip. Don't talk to other people. Don't stop to other people. Lower lip and chin. Easy rules. Easy to follow. Easy rules. Easy to follow. Collarbone. Even though it was challenging to live like that. Even though it was challenging like that. To live like that. To do that. Even though it was challenging to live like that. Oh, even though it was challenging to live like that. And it was very challenging at times. And it was very challenging at times. But here I am trying to go outside. But here I am trying to go outside. And I realize that I don't feel safe. And I realize that I don't feel safe. And I may or may not be safe. And I may or may not be safe. But right now, all my alarms are on. But all my alarms are on. No sonopolip. I'm scared. I'm scared? Lower lip and chin. Very much so. Very much so. Collarbone. I wish people were wearing a mask. I wish people were wearing the mask. Under the arm. That would make me feel somewhat safer. That would make me feel somewhat safer. Top of your head. But some people may not want to do that. But some people may not want to do that. Inside of the eyebrow, for religious reasons. For religious reasons. Outside of the eye, or for other reasons. Or for other reasons. Under the eye, and that's scary to me. And that's scary to me. No, it's an upper lip, and I don't know how to handle that. And I don't know how to handle that. Lower lip and chin, in a way that can allow me to live my life anyways. In a way that may allow me to live my life anyway. Collarbone, right now I don't know how to live like that. Right now I don't know how to live that way. Under the arm. And I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Up of yet, but I know that I need to move forward somehow. But I know I have to move forward somehow. Take a breath. What comes to mind, Joan? Even though I'm living among a lot of people and with everybody's on top of each other, mm -hmm. I gotta find my own way mm -hmm. and decide that I gotta do what I gotta do. And that means I have to go out and find ways around them because I can't stop living and I can't stop doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. 
Is there a way to communicate that to them in a way that they would do what you need them to do? I don't know. I'm, my thing is that my sound is not coming in well. Is there a way that you can communicate to them that they need to be respectful? You can't. I mean, like, all right, I don't know what was happening this weekend. They have a big open truck with the roll in making music and singing whatever they're singing, but I don't understand the language, so it doesn't matter. But I mean, they're all out celebrating. Mm. Or like, you know, some of these students are still going to schools, even though the schools are supposed to be closed. But that's not my business. That's not my point. But as far as the now, world, here's, here's my point. My point is, are we hating the world or are we hating the people that are stopping us from living? I'm not hating the world. There's nothing wrong with the world. There's I just want to make sure problem. we're not saying this is the students, but that's none of my business and they're over there right okay. now. My concern is you and not everybody's actions. Okay. Because we can't, we can't. But see, when they're out there making that music that brings all the neighbors out without masks and everything else to look and see what these people are doing. They, you sure they're not wearing masks? Oh, very sure. Okay. And all my neighbors wearing masks? No. Okay. When they go out, but like around, no. When they go out, they do wear masks and they, they don't wear masks when? In the backyard, it's all right not to wear a mask, they okay. feel. So you don't we go do in the backyard, the backyard with them, so that's, that's it. They feel we're all safe and I should be over socializing with them and I won't go over because they're not wearing masks and the children are outside. We've been told to stay away from young children. And it's very hard because then they go in and the kid is looking for me to talk to or play with them. Understood. Have you told them that? Told them that about that you, the mask? Or that, about you don't, that you're not able to come to the backyard unless they wear a mask. And that you're not able to come to the backyard unless they keep social distancing in place. Uh, no, as far as the mask goes, no. Okay. I end up being just as bad as they are going okay. out without it. Okay. So if you haven't told them, then how would they know? About wearing the mask? Mm -hmm. About you needing them to wear a mask to come out. Oh, the I tell them I have to stay inside. Well, it's true. Okay. See, and that's what I'm saying. Um, so You're saying I should confront them with. What I, I think it's not a confrontation. No. You come across it's right now as, as, as a little bit like it's you and me, and I'm going to fight this. And if you don't do this, but we got to communicate our needs, you right. know, for example, something I do is I have a whole pack of masks in my car. When somebody doesn't wear a mask and they're close and coming close, I ask them if they would like one. Right. And mm -hmm. that's what I do. Right. Um, I have talked to people and said, look, I need you to understand something. You know, um, if you come close, if you have this and you give it to me, I can die. Right. And I said this very politely and they were like, oh my God, I was not thinking about that. Right. So the question is, do we have expectations that we think other people will not fulfill anyways? So what's the point of talking to them and getting upset about that and withdrawing? Or are we finding a way to communicate to people that care about us in a way that our life begins to expand again? And we're talking a phone call. We're talking sending a quick card. Hey, I am so excited to see you in the backyard. I just need you to know I, I am not comfortable doing that without a mask. And I don't know if we can address that or solve that problem. You know, it's not a confrontation. It's not they do it in order to kill you. And I think that's important to remember that they're not doing this to kill you. They're not, it's not like people are out there right now. Oh, not no, wearing they, a mask to invite kill. me over to eat. I mean, come on in the house, but I know it's in the house is the same thing as outside. They're not going to wear the mask okay. or stay a distance from me. So the point is that you need to set those parameters yourself. You can't accept for other people to read your mind. You can't accept for other people to be, um, to be more proactive than you are in order for you to create an environment that is safe, you will have to talk to them and establish that. Right. And, yes. uh, and that is really your next step, John, you will have to tell people. Okay. And if that means having a pretty shirt printed when you're outside and say, please wear a mask or stay 12 feet away. 
then that's what you need to do. They're cheap. You can get them online. You can probably, I don't even know if they make them online, but I would just have one made. Right? Seriously, you can, that, that's not expensive to do. Right? But we can't assume and say, I can't do this because these people are running their music and then we're getting all angry and all frustrated and don't trust the world anymore. When, whereas there may be other ways and that require, that's another learning course for us. It requires us to step up more for what we need while allowing others to also, to not feeling dispowered through that, right? If somebody says, well, you're not marrying a mouse, so you, you got to be a jerk who doesn't care about my life, that's a mouthful. You know, if somebody told me that, I would probably feel insulted because that's not the way I am. If I don't wear a mask because I didn't think about it, now I have an opportunity to do that. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you think you could do that? Or to a certain degree, yes. Okay. Like when they come into your house without the mask. They are not coming into your house without the mask. They're coming in to do me a favor. To fix something. It's not. I my water on the other day. This is what I'm saying. You have to be proactive in a kind and understanding way. You know, I so love for you to come to my house. I really appreciate it. I am at a place right now where I panic if I don't see it. somebody without a mask. I am just panicking and I was wondering if you would be kind enough to just put one on one with there so that I don't have to panic. If they come to your house to do you a favor, they might as well wear a mask. But that's on you. Can you do that? I can try. Trying isn't doing, trying is trying. Okay. Right. I would do. What will be, why would this be hard for you? I think this is really, it's another why, because theme, the you know, it's kind of like we need right. to, the person we, that need came to know, we need to know, we need to know, create a life, easy. Joan, hold on a minute. We need to know, create a life that works for us. That is our next step, right? We need right. to decide what that looks like. We need to decide, do we want to be out and about? Yes. Do we want to, do we want to hunker down? Do we want to, socialize with people do we need to hug we need to make those decisions and think this through right and we can't expect for our border and our limits to be the exact same than for other people's right and that's i think is a really big risk that people are running right now is that they just assume you know they want the one guideline and that's the way this works and if for some reason it doesn't work instead of taking responsibility and saying well i need it this or that way they just get angry you should not be doing this instead of trying to find a way to make them not do it before we see them, right? This is a lot on us, but it might just be necessary. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. How does that feel? To set the boundaries? To I guess I need stronger than I am. To communicate. Be more forceful to communicate better. Why do you think you need to be forceful in order to be kind? No, I mean, forcing myself as far as, you know, telling him I can be, ta all right, be tactful and telling her, telling him he's under quarantine. He's not supposed to be even out of his house and he's in my house, but I asked him to come in to check my water. Okay. So we're having a communication problem. You guys hear that? Okay. Top of your head. So here I am. Here I am. And I'm used to, to talking to people. And I'm used to talking to people. In a certain kind of way. In a certain kind of way. Telling them. Telling them. Telling them. What to do and not to do. What to do and not to do. I taught for 46 years. You told or you taught? I taught. Teach. School. Yeah. I'm used to... <laughs> oh, that... That's that's my style. That's my style. That's my style. And it's probably why people love me. That's probably why people love me. <laughs> I'm straightforward and in between the eyes. Straightforward and in between the eyes. But right now. But right now. That might not be serving me well. That may not be so good, not serve me well. Because I'm not getting what I want. Because I'm not getting what I want. And I'm taking this very personal. And I take it very personal. This is personal to me. This is personal to me. I feel like I'm going to die if they don't wear a mask. I feel I'm going to die if they don't wear a mask. 
So I have a right to be really angry. So I have a right to be angry, really angry. This is personal to me. This is personal. But what if it wasn't personal to them? And what, what if it wasn't personal for them? What if that's not why they're not doing it? Maybe that's not why they're not doing it. Maybe I need to sit down and talk with them. Maybe I have to sit down and talk with them. Help them understand me better. How can they understand me better? Help them understand that I'm scared. Help them to understand that I'm scared. I, I'm really scared. I'm really scared. I am in an age group where I should be scared. I'm in an age group where I should really be scared. And I, at the same time, I love them and I want to have the connection. At the same time, I love them and want to have a relationship with them. Yeah. And I just don't know how to have it both right now. And I just don't know how to have both right now. Ha know how to have both right now. Without them making a sacrifice that may be hard to make. Without them making a sacrifice that may be hard for them to make. Maybe that it's really hard for them to wear a mask. Maybe it's really hard for them to wear a mask. And maybe it's really difficult for them to do that for me. And maybe really hard for them to see that coming. Maybe it's very difficult for them to do that for me. Maybe it's very difficult for them to do that for me. So maybe I need to find out why that's so hard. Maybe I need to find out why that's so hard. And what's in it for them if they don't wear it? And what's in it for them if they don't wear it? What is in it for them if they don't keep stay six feet apart? And what is it for them if they don't stay six feet apart? And they can understand. And they can understand. Why it is so hard for me. Why it's so hard for me. And eventually we all agree. And eventually we all agree. That this is really hard for all of us. That this is very hard for all of us. Very hard for all of us. Very hard for all of us. And we need to find a way to get together. And we need to find a way to get together. And for the time being. And for the time being. Until I'm really safe. Until I'm really safe. And I don't know when that's going to be. And I don't know when that's going to be. I will, I will really need them to wear a mask to protect me. I will really need them to wear a mask. To protect me. To protect me. And to make me feel safe again. And for me to feel safe around them. And I wonder if I can find a way. And I wonder if I can find a way. To negotiate that with them. To negotiate that with them. After all, they come to my house to help me. After all, they're coming to my house to help me. And this is something else they could do for me. And this is something else they can do for me. We have that kind of relationship. We have that kind of relationship. I'm going to ask for help. I'm not asking for help. I'm going to ask for help. Oh, I'm going to ask for help. I'm going to ask for them to come over to the house. I'm going to ask for them to come over to the house. And maybe take a walk with me. And maybe take a walk with me. Six feet apart. Six feet apart. When I'm afraid to be in a crowd. When I'm afraid to be in a crowd. Maybe I can ask them for more favors. Maybe I'm asking them for more favors. I can ask them for more favors. Can ask them for more favors. Then maybe. I can have the house on. But maybe the best way to do that. Maybe the best way to do that. Is one on one. One on one. One person at a time. One person at a time. Explaining my conflict. Explaining my conflict. Explaining my problems. Explaining my problem. Explaining how this has impacted me. Explaining how this has impacted me. Both personally and emotionally. Both personally and emotionally. And how hard it is for me right now to trust anything. And how hard it is for me at this time to process anything. To trust anything. To trust anything. Anyone. Just explaining it to them. Just explaining it. Just explaining it. To the people who understand. Explaining it to the people I love. And to the people who understand. And to the people who understand. Starting to build my community. Starting to build my community. In a way that works for me. In a way that works for me. Take a breath. How does that feel? Excuse me? How does that feel? Well, I guess in my mind is going through the things I should be doing or saying to them. Mm -hmm. that, that's, you know, take, 
take the pressure off, put it that way. Yeah, and you start with a person that's already on your side. Um, with a person of influence, a person that has impact on your community, a person that understands and they see there's a real need here to help you out right now. Just talk to them. Pick up the phone, talk through the window, do what you need to do. But don't assume that they know how you feel. Tell them how you feel. That's scary right now. Brooklyn, holy, no, I wouldn't want to be there right now. Neither do I. <laughs> no. No. I know. You know, it's easy for us here in, in New Hampshire. We're socially isolated with no changes. <laughs> no, no. No, no matter where you are, you run the bump. My, 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 organic, uh, my organic farmer just does curb pickup now. That's the only well, I get organic when I, you know, cold. But you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So this is your life, your situation has a lot of benefits. That's definitely my life. And that's what you need to do. And if that challenges you, then that's your challenge now. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. So a lot of it is, I mean, I should, I'm justifying my friends now. Uh, everybody's going crazy. Everybody really wants to get out of the house. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. What matters is that you are okay. Out with it doesn't them. matter if you understand them. I understand them too but it doesn't matter, right? And for you to create your environment in a way that works for you does not mean you insult others, you, cut, you limit their personal rights or anything of that nature. I just take care of myself, basically. You need to create your life, right? This is not about telling other people what to do and how to live. This is about telling them who they need to be in order for you to meet them right? This is very different. And mm -hmm. there may be people who say, look, you know, I could not care less. And uh, if your immune system is weak, then why are you in the store? Right? And if those are the people and they don't want to have a conversation and they don't want to understand that they are potentially killing people with their actions, then my responsibility is to stay away. Right? If I have legal rights, I can exercise them. If I don't have legal rights, I can't. So my job is to stay healthy, not to have an argument with a bitch. <laughs> right? So this is another, another challenge for you. Mm -hmm. Pull people on your side one by one. Help them understand that this is, Brooklyn is not the place to let your guard down right now. And it's certainly not when you're in an older age break or bracket or when you're, you know, when you're immune compromised. And that's just how that goes. You know, will there be consequences for other areas that for a while? Yeah, for sure. I love swimming. I love the beach very much. Right. Very, very much. I'm a water person. Right. Yeah. There are consequences. So that's, that's where that goes. Okay. It will give you a lot of power when you realize that people have compassion. It will make you feel better. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let us know how that goes. See, this is one of those big changes. I'm going to just unmute everybody really quick and, and we can talk about this for a minute. Um, did I do this? Oh, uh, unmuted unless you muted yourself. Yes. You know, these are, this is again, this is another step right now. You know, how, to decide for ourselves what we can and need to do. And not everybody is in a situation where they can, you know, clearly um, professionally, not everybody can do that. But if we can do it, you know, that's how that goes. So how are you guys feeling about this? My experience has been people are not really reacting against you. They're reacting against the situation and mm -hmm. you can't make me wear a mask. So I made it about me is I hit three of the five risk categories and I'm just not comfortable and not able to be out if everyone's not wearing a mask. So that's, it's not saying you have to wear a mask. It's saying I'm frail or I'm immune compromised. I'm diabetic. I'm over 60 and I have on, have had asthma. So it's, and I don't go out where there are crowds and I go early to the grocery store. So pick one or two things. Don't just go out and 
like nothing's happened. So pick a small thing. Yeah. Well, that those, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and so it's your fault for being immune compromised. As far as your discussion, it's like, can you help me because I have a frailty here? Not you're an asshole for not wearing a mask. Those of you who have children, you know that your entire mm -hmm. life changes the second you have a newborn at home. You don't go to the theater. You don't go to the restaurant. You go to the grocery store in and out if you can. You're a nurse at the register, <laughs> if you mean, <laughs> right? Or drop down in the aisle of market basket behind, behind a shopping cart. You change diapers in areas where you should not be changing diapers. You uh, 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 leave family gathering because the child is crying. You do whatever the hell you need to do to raise that child, right? It's not all pretty. It's not all fun. Sometimes it totally sucks. And yes, you wish you had a sitter and you don't. This is kind of like that. It's a life change. And we have to learn how to deal with that. We have to learn what this does for us. We have a situation in our life that is a big deal. And, uh, and we have to learn what that means. And for some of us, that means having conversations. For some of that, us, that means not being able to do things we like to do. The same way we wouldn't do it if we have a newborn. Right? Does that suck? Hell yeah. Right? But <laughs> you know, and we can be full of resentment about that, but what difference does that make? Now, yeah. Well, I'm okay for now. Mm -hmm. My a worry that just sort of came up as I thought about this call is that um, I'm uh, in North Carolina where there's quite a lot of virus still, but we're opening anyhow. Mm -hmm. and, and you get 50,000 Republicans, but I'm sorry, I had to this. <laughs> New um, splash, let it go. I, that was me. Just yeah, well, I got <laughs> called this morning by some uh, pro-life person trying to get me to support her views and um, just made me mad. But anyhow, you know, she was sure that she was going to find a Republican on the end of this line here in the boondocks. But anyhow, um, what, what happens if they decide that, well, this is okay, and we'll just stay like this, and everybody who needs to stay home can just stay home forever, because we're not going to... Um, we're not going to do contact tracing and we're not going to do the things to really deal with the virus. We'll just continue as we are. And mm -hmm. so it, the future scares me a little to think mm -hmm. that we might be, some of us who have to make these decisions might be at home for, yeah, until there's a vaccine. And even then we don't know. Hey, even then we don't know. All right, at your point, even though I'm really afraid. Even though I'm really afraid. That the future is going to be bleak. That the future is going to be bleak. That my life has to be indoors. That my life has to be isolated. Isolated, yes. That I'm going to be isolated. I'm going to be isolated. And in only very specific areas. And in only very specific areas. I'm very afraid of that. I'm very afraid of that. And I honor that fear. And I honor that fear. I accept that fear. I accept that fear. It's a big fear. It's a big fear. And I notice what it does to me. And I notice what it does to me. And even though I have no idea what the future is going to bring. And even though I have no idea what the future is going to bring. I have no idea. I have no idea. Nobody does. Nobody does. We can be curious about that. We can be curious about that. Well, we, can't, we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't worry. Because something's, ha something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. That is going to allow us to live a life. That is going to allow us to live a life. Life. And worrying about it. And worrying, and worrying about it. Outside of the boundaries of real concern. Outside of the boundaries of real concern. And things we can control. And things we can control. Might that might add insult to injury. Might add insult to injury. And even though I may be right. 
And even though I may be right. Maybe that I'm stuck inside much longer than I thought I would. Maybe I'm stuck inside much longer than I thought I'd be. Maybe I will not be able to do things I used to do. Maybe I will not be able to do things I used to do. At least not without taking a serious risk. At least not without taking a serious risk. That is an option. That is an option. That is a possibility. That is a possibility. But I can choose. But I can choose. To be surprisingly okay with that. To be surprisingly okay with that. I have no idea. I have, I have no idea. And it doesn't seem fair at all. And it doesn't seem fair at all. It seems so unfair that I have to deal with this. It seems so unfair that I have to de deal with this indefinitely. <laughs> yeah, and it seems so so uh, so scary that I might have to deal with this indefinitely. And it seems so scary that I might have to deal with this indefinitely. It's a scary thought. It's a scary thought. That I might have to deal with this indefinitely. That I might have to deal with this indefinitely. And I'm going to tap on that fear. And I'm going to tap on that fear. 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 With kindness and compassion. With kindness and compassion. Compassion. And I think what comes up for me now is that um, I'm, uh, I'm angry and hurt that uh, I feel like that uh, people, the uh, folks in charge are, um, don't care about people who, who do have reasons to, to stay isolated. That it's just like, well, if, uh, if they need to stay isolated, they can just stay isolated and the rest of us are getting back to work. Okay. Even though I'm really, where do you feel that anger in your body? I feel it in my chest and my gut. Which one's worse? Gut. Gut. Even though I have this gut feeling. Even though I have this gut feeling. This anger in my gut. This anger in my gut. About the people in charge that don't care. About the people in charge that don't care. That anger is sitting right in my gut. That anger is sitting right in my gut. And it's doing amazing things for my mental health. It's doing amazing things for my mental it's health. It's really helping me right now. It's really helping me right now. That anger about people. That anger about people. Whoever those people are. Whoever those people are. It's not better, changing what they do a bit. There better be somebody out there who is responsible for this. There better be somebody out there who's responsible for Maybe this. Maybe it's a whole religious group. Maybe it's a whole religious group. Maybe it's a whole party. Maybe, Maybe it's a whole party. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's somebody else. But there's got to be somebody who doesn't care about me. There's got to be somebody who doesn't care about me. And that makes me really mad right now. That makes me really mad right now. Mad in right my now. gut. Yeah, my, anger in my, in my gut. I'm going to tap on that anger. I'm going to tap on that anger. And get some self-esteem back. And get some self-esteem back. And even though it feels like I'm at other people's mercy. Even though it feels like I'm at other people's mercy. And that feeling isn't good for me. That feeling isn't good for me. And I don't know who is it good for. I don't know who it's good for. Because the people I'm afraid of don't know how I feel. People I'm afraid of don't know how I feel. And even if I did, I doubt that it mattered to them. And even if it, it did, I doubt that it would matter to them. I'm actually pretty sure it doesn't matter. I'm actually pretty sure it doesn't matter to I'm them. I'm actually damn sure it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm actually damn sure it doesn't matter to them. So why am I holding on to this? So why am I holding on to this? What's in it for me? What's in it for me? To blame other people for my situation. To blame other people for my situation. Because the reality is this is my situation. The reality is this is my situation. It's not my neighbor's situation. Not my neighbor's situation. It's not the government's situation. It's not the government's situation. It's my own life that sucks right now. It's my own life that sucks right now. And it's better be somebody else's fault. And it better be somebody else's fault. I better take this real personal. I better take this real personal. And I wonder what's in it for me if I do that. I wonder what's in it for me if I do that. But I love and accept myself anyways. But I love and accept myself anyway. And even though here I am. And even though here I am. Trapped with the craziness. Trapped with the craziness. And I better be angry at somebody. Better be angry at somebody. At people in charge who don't care. At people in charge who don't care. 
even though I'm surrounded by people who give so much. Even though I'm surrounded by people who give so much. Who really care. Who really care. Who really worry about me. Who really worry about me. And people like me. And people like me. And some, some people like me. And they worry about people like me. Oh, they worry about people like me. I'm surrounded by them. I'm surrounded by them. I'm surrounded by them. But I don't care. But I don't, but I don't care. care. I got to be mad at the people who don't. I've got to be mad at the people who don't. Even though they don't even know me. Even though they don't even know me. But I just have to make a blanket statement. I just have to make a blanket statement. But they are all bad. But they they're all bad. They, all of them don't care. All of them don't care. All of them don't have a pulse. All of them don't have a pulse. Or a human feeling in their body. Oh, or a human feeling in their body. Am I glad how, how, how evolved I am in my thinking? Am I glad how evolved I am in my thinking? That I have figured out exactly how, how other people are. That I figured out exactly how other people are. No compassion whatsoever. No, no compassion whatsoever. No kindness. No kindness. No caring. No caring. No, 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 no I give a shit. No, I give a shit. None of that. None of that. They're all bad. All bad. I know it for sure. I know it for sure. And now... Poor me has to sit in my apartment. And poor me has to sit in my house. In my house. Poor me has to, has to hunker down. Poor me has to hunker down. Poor me has no other options. Poor me has no other options. Because of all these people that I don't even know. Because of all these people that I don't even know. And I have a choice. And I have a choice. How long I want to feel this way. How long I want to feel this way. How long I'm going to feel this way. And at what point? And at what point? I'm going to start my start seeing my options. I'm going to start seeing my options. Top off yet. Maybe that time hasn't come yet. Maybe that time hasn't come yet. Maybe I don't like the changes that are about to come. Maybe I don't like the changes that are about to come. Maybe they're coming anyways, even if I don't like them. Maybe they're coming anyways, even if I don't like them. So all that I'm left with is anger. So all that I'm left with is anger. Maybe some of those are that just worry. Maybe some of that is just worry. You're just feeling pain about things that haven't even happened yet. Feeling pain about things that haven't even happened yet. Maybe I have options. Maybe I have options. Real options. Real yeah. options. Good options. Good, good options. options. And good opportunities. And good, good opportunities. To live a fantastic life. To live a fantastic life. <sighs> yes, thank you. You're welcome. I am going to do that. Okay. Yes, Elaine. I think your mic is open unless you have muted yourself. Is that I better? Have, that is very good. Okay. That's exactly my situation. There's, in Georgia, uh, a lot of things are wide open and a lot of people are not wearing masks and not social distancing. And yet the people over the age of 60 have to stay in until June the 12th. And we're wondering if they'll extend that and extend it and extend it. And if they don't extend it and they let us out, we probably have got the common sense not to go out because it's not going to be safe. I need to get my Okay. So how are you feeling about that? I think she just had to get the call. All right. So you guys see this, right? We're all in this, some way or another, we're all in this together. And I think... Actually, for some reason, everybody's muted right now. So let me guess. Go ahead and change that and mute all. Um, you know, this has different aspects, and it has it hits everybody in a different way. You know, mm -hmm. so the question then is: I mean, clearly, you will live. <clears throat> you know, you live in your in your. Is it assistant living, retirement living? What is it that you live in, Elaine? It is a wonderful four level care retirement community, and okay. we're in. We're in a very beautiful, large house. And a lot of our, almost all of our activities have been curtailed for the safety of the community. Right. 
And we are all very well trained and conditioned to wear a mask and keep social distance. And if we go out, and it's very seldom supposed to be for necessities, mm -hmm. we see the rest of the world out there, a lot of them ignoring all that. Yeah. But that's, that's distressing. And the whole notion of not knowing how long it's going to happen and who's going to be in charge of making the decisions. That's just exactly uh, the, yeah. the same thing that she was talking about. Yeah. Top of your head, what if? What if? Instead of the other, this was actually permanent. It was actually permanent. Actually permanent. What if? What if? I had to wear a mask for the rest of my life. What if I have to wear that mask the rest of my life when I'm outside? What if? What if? I could be surprisingly okay with doing that. I could be surprisingly okay with doing that. What if? What if? My future life was not as convenient as it used to be. My future life is not as convenient as it used to be. When am I going to accept that? When am I going to accept that? How long will it take for me to get my mojo back? How long will it take me to get my mojo back? How long will it take to, for me to get my happiness back? How long will it take me to get my happiness back? How much time do I give myself with anger and frustration? How much time do I give myself with anger and frustration? When am I going to start seeing the opportunities again? When am I going to start seeing the opportunities again? How long, how much time do I give myself? How much time do I give myself? I know this is hard right now. I know I, this is hard, hard right now. It's very hard right now. <clears throat> it's very hard right now. But how much time do I give myself? And how much time do I give myself? To feel surprisingly comfortable anyways. Feel response. To surprisingly feel comfortable anyways. Anyways. It's hard. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the most difficult things is reimagining um, worship mm -hmm. when it will have to be so very different from what it has been for years and years. Mm -hmm. Corporate worship. There's no going back until we get a vaccine, really. There's no singing. There's no large groups that we would be safe in. So we are working at finding new ways, other ways. But that's a big adjustment. Yeah, <clears throat> my my church actually records the service and we all pitch in and I started a Facebook group and I host a um, a watch party where we show the video um, at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. So people can come in, they can still say hello. Um, you can still feel the presence of others. Is it different? It is different, but it's not as lonely as it would be to watch this alone. Yeah. So, um, I hear you. Yeah, we're beginning some of that with the Zoom groups and... Uh, Facebook is a really good idea. For mm. this, Facebook is a wonderful idea because they really have the infrastructure in place and everybody can access it easily. So, just saying that, it's been working for us for months. You know, we started this right away and um, I hear you. I hear you, yeah. you know. It's difficult. It's and and you know I there is no other way. I think for our call today this one once again is such a it's a it's a time when we just have to realize it is what it is, mm -hmm. right? We can't tap and it magically goes away. I hear you. It's very hard. You know, yeah. for me, my question is: Will I ever be able to go home again? And the answer is probably not. Right? I will probably never see my parents again because they live in Germany and I can't get in an airplane. Right. Sucks. And they're in the mid eighties. You know, I hear you. I hear you. And when my daughter is over there, I don't know if I'm gonna see her again. Cause there's two airplanes. Yeah. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I hear you. So what are we gonna do? There's nothing we can do about future thoughts right now. We gotta stay focused right now. We really gotta stay focused. We got to look at what we can change, just like we did um, a minute ago with Joan. 
fix what you can change and the rest change it or fix it when you get there. That's the only thing we can do right now. What do I need to do right now to either keep my sanity together, to stay physically healthy, to have my needs met, to create the relationships I need, to do it in a way that works for me? You know, I tell you what I've, I've been doing for whatever that's worth is I think six feet, I actually believe 12 feet is better because we just chose that. That doesn't mean that, you know, 12 feet is four meters, big deal. That's nothing. I can go to my neighbor and stand in that driveway. I'm not going to kill them. They're not going to kill me. Why? Because they are that far away and we'll probably wear a mask. We wear a We're mask. We're doing, doing a lot of that. You know, it's not like you have to be on the other side of, a, the, of an Olympic stadium. No. Right. And you can knock on somebody's door. You can say, hey, do you want to meet at the, you know, have a mailbox party? Mm -hmm. we're, having a, we're having screen porch gatherings yeah. for, for people. Yeah. You know, days. yeah. Or you do it across the street. You know, yeah. the point being is not that this is the ideal situation in a year from now, in six months from now, in five years from now. That's not what we're talking about. We don't have any impact on that. But what we do have impact on is what we do today. Right? And we can either worry about what we cannot do in five years, which nobody knows, or we can actually stay focused on saying, how do I get through this? What do I need to do to get it right? Where's my opportunity in this? And where can I bend the rules without doing anything stupid? And I, I believe in bending rules as well. I believe that if there's nobody on the street, I am safe to go out. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just stupid to say you can't go out. Well, of course you can. If there's nobody there, why would you not? Right? There's just no, that's just, there's no rationale to that. The only thing that I want to do is have everybody raise out. But if you save, you save. Yep. Right? And it's not never an, an one or the other. If somebody isn't, if I'm not comfortable with somebody, I don't know that I'm going to, you know, get this right or, you know, I have the right advice here and I'm just sharing my heart in this, you know. If I see people not wearing a mask in the store, I back four feet away from them and they notice that. Mm -hmm. They see that, right? They come around the corner. If they're too close, I will physically back up. Yeah. Or when the cashier has the mask down here and not the, the nose covered and you go, oh, backing up. No, no. I, I actually tell them, I'm sorry, I cannot check out with you. I told them that. She said, well, you want to come over? I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You're not wearing a mask. And she well, came over for the mask. You know, it's not about them making a mistake. It's about, it's about me making a decision. Mm -hmm. And well, we, decision, we have to make those decisions. You yeah. know, make the decision the same way you would make it for your newborn. Right? You would never go into a credit place with all sorts of nutty people who are doing ridiculous things with a newborn in your arms. Why? Because it's not safe. Mm -hmm. Same thing now. And a lot of people, I think, feel that they have no opportunities, that everybody's telling them what to do and everything is just small and this and that and the other thing. There's opportunities here too. We need to focus on the next step, not on the step that we do next year. Who knows? That's true. You it's know. a waste of time. Well, not, not only are we going to probably have a vaccine, they have things that you can use that have oxygen attached that you can breathe on your own and be in your own little cocoon and go someplace if you had to, like even fly. You would have a special filter there. The PPE is going to be upgraded. There, there are a lot of things you can do. Yeah. You know, this is my hydroperoxide food grade little ventilator. You know, yeah. you need oxygen, you take the oxygen. Find a way is the point. Yeah. And I think for people to get out of victimization and remember all the things that our parents did to us and that other people did to us and that we didn't uh, did get or didn't get or should have gotten or didn't, you know, whatever it is. This impacts us today right? In our belief and how much we can actually self-direct our lives. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a really good time to get rid of that idea, you know, just because somebody's, you know, whatever, did something really stupid wrong and, and should have never done this and shame on them, doesn't mean that today we cannot tell somebody else to put a damn mask on when they talk to us. And we think this way very often. And that's just not the truth. And 
um, this is a huge learning opportunity right now. It really, really is. It's, it's huge. You know, it's an opportunity to say no. I had a neighbor ask me, oh, you know, can you go shopping for me? And I was thinking, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, and, and I, I actually got a few things and I went back and said, I just need you to know you need to ask somebody else next time. You know, it was fine. It was okay. But I'm not going to do that again. Oh, yeah, I can ask somebody else. Yeah. You know, I could have told her that right away. I understand that. You know, so this is an opportunity to do what we always wanted. Actually, right now, for a lot of people, it's an opportunity to, for the first time in their lives, to have people respect their boundaries for health reasons. Exactly. Right? This is really, like, you can actually prove you're right right now. Like, Joan, you can, you have proof. Say, look, see this? H, I'm in the age bracket. <laughs> Done. No discussion. <laughs> right? So, yeah. So what comes up when we talk about things like that? And actually, Joan, I just wanted to share something with you that, that um, Richard said. He said, fear exists, but Joan demonstrated a lot of courage just by taking the baby steps and walking out to the mm -hmm. market. Next time you may feel more comfortable taking a few steps into the shop for a short time. Good for you. You know? Yeah. And you're not going to go into a shop where you don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. The same way you wouldn't go into a shop when you have a newborn in your arms. Right? It's just not happening. Or if you have four children around you, you will not go into a shop. So, <laughs> yeah. So what comes up when we talk about this? What comes up for you guys? Yeah, Bob. For me, it's it's one. Uh, New York is not a good a new test area. I mean, to test boundaries. So I would be very limited as to my first times I go out. I go to a grocery store that's organic, and they enforce their people have masks and they have on. And I go at old folks' time, which is six o'clock on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or something. So take baby steps. You don't expect a toddler to get up and run across the room, do little stuff. And Texas is a concealed carry state. Uh, if just pretend if you walked up to a group and somebody had a gun, you'd get the hell out. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think twice about it. You go, I'm out of here. Yeah. And if I drive by and there are a lot of people and stuff, I just drive on by and do something else. Yeah. The point being is we are very used to living with a certain kind of risk and making good decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a risk taker. I mean, for going to a gunfight or something. <laughs> not a good risk to take. Yeah. Yeah. Barb, well, you wanted to say something as well. What, what comes to mind? Um, me? Yeah, I think oh. um, what's, what's occurring to me, it, it, we keep talking about opportunities and, and, it, and boy, the more we talk about it, the more I see um, this is way bigger than COVID. This boundary setting and doing what you need to do to make yourself feel comfortable, even if COVID didn't exist, is so clear to me of all the times I've bent and done things I really didn't want to do, or I did them to make somebody else feel good. You know, I'm really put myself last and I'm seeing now it's like, wow, this is nobody's responsibility, but mine. And if this doesn't feel good, um, then I shouldn't be doing it. And I can't be angry at them. And yet I've spent years <laughs> being angry at people because I didn't want to do it and I did it. And so that was the first insight that, that I got. This is so much bigger than COVID. Yeah. And the second one, when Nell was talking about, um, I think it was now, you know, uh, these people don't care. And when you brought up the fact is there's thousands of people that care. It's so easy to just go negative instead of looking balanced. So again, this is another opportunity that has nothing to do with, it has everything to do with COVID, but in a way it's bigger 
than COVID. As, I think you're right. As soon as we believe there's a group of people against us, people lose their face. Yeah. It's all these people who all don't care. We don't even know if they exist, right? If we look at the individual, our opportunities are endless, right? I don't need to be friends with the whole world. The whole world could not care less if I'm here or not, right? right? But I need to be friends with my friends. I need to create relationships with people. I need to invest into things. I need to do things that make me happy and trying to make other people happy too. But this is all personal, right? Joan, you probably don't even have to worry so much about the people on the other side of the road because they're not your friends, right? I mean, so, and you're not going to change that by making them put a mask on. But you do have to worry about the people that you spend your life with and share your concerns, and really make them understand, you know, we're all in this together right now because we actually care about each other. We love each other. You know, if, the, if mass is important to you, make it a community effort. We, we had discussions about this, you know. I'm not, I mean, I, don't, I want to seem like the know-it-all and have-it-all because clearly that's not the case. It's just one perspective that is at least authentic and a bit vulnerable here. But tons of, tons of discussions. So what... The, in the world are we going to do and bring up everybody's problems here? How are we going to do this? Can we do phone uh, connections? Can we do, who do we need to reach out for? Who is at risk? How can we stay in contact? What do we do if we find something out? These are huge opportunities to talk to people we never get to talk to, you know? And yeah, I, I believe that if we don't learn now to be more responsible for our immediate environment, as a human race, the environment is going to teach us and it's already doing that, right? We need to rail it back. We need to stop being stupid. We need to stop thinking that the whole world belongs to us because it's already showing us, no? Not like that, you know? So see opportunity in that. It's huge. Is it easy? No. Is it painful? painless? No, but it's who we are. So I don't know if that makes any sense. You may disagree going off on a tangent here <laughs> but i don't know it's hard you know you look back at those times and say this was really really hard for much longer than i thought it would you know we all thought by fe by april 15th we're back at the dentist you know so what are your thoughts one step at a time one day at a time Have you ever done that before? I sometimes. Sometimes, yes. All Good right. I'm, I'm involved with the, the community college anyhow. Mm -hmm. And they're zooming in and they're trying to reorganize or whatever. Yep. Get more people involved, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe what could the proactive way be? Well, like, like it's a joke. Yeah, advising you to register for the fall, but you can't register for the fall because you don't know if it's going to be all online or with some written person. So don't tell me to register. We have to wait, find out more information. Okay. Or, or you can pick up the phone and say, would you explain to me, is this online or in person? No, it says it's, they don't know. <laughs> they added, that is true. They really don't know. So then you register, and if it's in person, you can't go. You're right. Then it just took us, I just got my money back from uh, this term, began in March. Oh, great. I went, I went to three classes and that was over. The parking, I never got to the parking. I bought the parking permit and it was closed the next day. So I returned that also. Okay. So that didn't work. No, that took up to whatever. Yeah. So it's going to work and we have to find out you know, if they're going to have it all going to be online. Well, I dropped out because it was karate. But maybe it's just a plain exercise class if they would waive and let us go back into something like that. Then I registered right this minute. You'll have to find out. Yeah, yeah you have to, a little okay. more knowledge. So it's, okay. that's why I said one day at a time. Yeah. What else comes to mind? You know, in that, I have you problems. Can you hear me? Is this Charlie? Yes. Yes. What comes to mind is, is to work on myself and 
release myself from feelings of being an, a, a victim yeah. and take responsibility for my actions, my own feelings, and to be able to reach out to other people, whether it's to say, please get out of my way or put on a mask or uh, get me some groceries or whatever, without the resentment, without, so the, without the anger, because that just uh, uh, um, isolates me even more. I love it that you say that. If you told me, please get out of my way, I would look down at you. This is not, not on your center. If you say, excuse me, would you let me pass? I would Absolutely. smile. If you told me, excuse me, would you get out of my way? Yes. I would not know why you would talk to me like that. That's right. That's exactly the difference. Uh, only yeah. even more exaggerated than that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it's a, this is a, a, an opportunity. I've been listening to the conversation. It's wonderful. Um, that, that, um, it's so, an opportunity for me to clean up my own, my yeah. own act and yeah out in fresh and new ways we have no idea what's going to happen but i can be cleaner than i am right now inside i can be more uh, at peace more resilient more healthy more balanced more humorous more kind than i am now so that's what i can do uh, that is so wonderful you're saying that yes and i think we all need to <laughs> we all need to yeah see that's a contradiction in itself but i think um sometimes it's good advice to just let the um presumptions go that mm -hmm. we know why people do things that we know how people feel that we know that how you know a government works or, or groups of people act or you know we don't know anything right now you know, what I do know is that a lot of people are really longing for kindness and caring and support. Mm -hmm. If you come across as kind and caring and support and help them, our life will be filled with people who care about kindness, caring, and support. What we focus on multiplies. Yes. And the way we reach out to others is the way that they will respond to us. That's right. Yeah. So if you explain to me, you know, excuse me, would you let me pass for a minute? And then you give him a nice smile with the eyes. I think the mask wearing gives us a huge opportunity to learn to smile with our eyes because they can't see a mouth. <laughs> and I think that's actually really nice because it, it has more effort to it, right? It, it requires more action of, of connecting and it's worth a while. If we make it clear to them, you know, that we just, that we're just afraid right now, and even say, even apologize and say, you know, maybe I'm exaggerating and you may even be right, but I am just so freaking scared right now because of whatever, you know, whatever you want to say. Who are they to say that you're wrong? And you get compassion and support and people react to you in a way that you give them an opportunity to re react to you in a new way. So this should, can be, just like Barbara said, this can be very empowering right now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing to think of it that way. It's an opportunity. I didn't want it, but it's an opportunity. I'm going to take it that way. Learn how to go, learn how to go with the flow. Learn how to get rid of old victim feelings that that are getting triggered, etc. That sounds fantastic, Charlie, and I'm very proud of you for that. If Thank I can say so. I'm really working on it, uh, drawing about it, dancing about it, whistling about it, uh, mm -hmm. in any way I can. Good for you. Good for you. Then you will get there. And I'm, I'm grateful for this group of, of wonderful women, mostly, but men too. I'm grateful to have this every Tuesday. It's sensational. Thank you, Ingrid. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. So I think we are at the end of our call, though, for today. So Great timing. Uh, yeah. So it's, you know, this is where we're at right now. This is how you get through the rough times. You know, you deal with your grief. You deal with the sadness. You deal with the challenges. And eventually, you know, you, you, we, we just start to learn to find our power in that new situation and create a life we want in a new way. That's how we do that.
step by step over the weeks, over the months, we find ourselves in a place that we would have never been able to get to if it hadn't been for this challenge. And that's what people do who succeed. That's what survivors do. That's what victorious people do. Um, they find ways. They don't want others to find the way for them and just follow along. That's what the entitled people do. Somebody told me I can go to the beach. You didn't tell me I can go sick, get sick. You know, they don't wear a mask. Why should I wear a mask? Well, you know, that's what people do who are not using their brain and who are not, who will feel entitled for some reason. I have, maybe I'm too outspoken about this. Maybe you disagree with me. And that's perfectly fine. But our responsibility, I believe, is really to find our own way. To find, create a life we want, to invite people into our life that we actually want to be there and to keep the ones out that we don't want to be there. And, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You do know if you want to talk with me privately and if you have things that are deeper for you that you would like to address in private sessions as well, shoot me an email. We can get on the phone and talk about what that would look like. Okay. I know that for some of you, that would be a really good idea right now. All right. So feel invited to do that. The initial consultation, obviously there's never a cost to that. And then you can just decide what works for you and what's right. Um, for some people, I would highly recommend that because this is a very difficult time and it's sometimes the time to just shake some trees and let some of those old apples go so that we can grow fresh ones. Yeah. Okay, so you know how to reach me there. Um, yeah, any last words before we head out? And I see Richard is on the phone, on there. We can see you now. Thank Hello, you, Ingrid. Friend. You're so welcome. It's always good to see you. And thank you, Charlie, for the uh, <clears throat> for your message too. May I may I share one experience that just popped into my head? I'll try to be succinct. Um, years ago, I went with my husband on a on a short business trip. When we came home, we found a, a fire had consumed our our apartment, mm -hmm. and we were stuck in a hotel with our suitcases, saying, "What happened?" and uh, we dealt with it in, as best we could and, and so on. But I found that encountering people afterwards, right afterwards, a day or two or three later, I would start saying, oh, we've had a fire. And they would return with their story of, oh, when I was in college, we had a dorm fire. And so, and I found that people were unable to really take in this, the, the hugeness of what I was saying. Mm -hmm. And so I was left I, even more isolated. So I wrote a, a comedy skit about it because people said, oh, what kind of a fire? Was it a big fire? Was it a little fire? No, wait, show me some heart. Show me a hug. So I, I said there were, I, I wrote a comedy sketch about it. It was just for myself, not for anything else. You know, there was the dragnet kind that had all the questions. Big fire, little fire. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Did you save anything? No. Or there was the other one who was, who just brushed it off. Oh, you had a fire. Oh, listen, I have a new dress. And so I invite you to write comedy about this, about your pain, about your, the silliness of it, about misunderstandings. And we can share that. That's one way to, to process it. Yes. I, I also would like to share something, if I may, because that came to mind. Um, I'm a professional speaker as well. Some of you may know that. And the very first lesson I learned was that you always have to leave your audience on a high note. Mm -hmm. Nobody has the right to claim other people's emotions. Mm -hmm. Just because I have a tough story doesn't mean I have the right to make your day miserable. <laughs> Right? Just because it's hard for me doesn't mean that now you have to feel my pain. Right? And just because I don't know how to process what's going on in my life means that now you have to, the part, you mean somebody has, else has the responsibility to, to do it for me. And that is when we're often, and, and, and that's one thing to get to the bottom of. When um, I've seen speakers do this. They go out and they tell the entire audience what it was like to get raped. You want to leave when that happens. 
you literally like, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Let me go to the bathroom. You know, tell me how it ended. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Right? Nobody has the right to manipulate other people's feelings. Right? So if we don't find a way for ourselves to present where we're at in our life from a point of view that makes the other person not get depressed, then we probably need to think this through a little bit. I'm not saying that we have to make a tough story a good story because that would be completely lying and dishonest and out of integrity. But what I am saying is that we have to find a way to fit our story into our own life and other people's lives in a way that we can all process, right? We have to know, especially with big stories, why are we telling that stories and what do we want to have when we're done telling it? Otherwise, we will be literally violating other people's boundaries. And that happens all the time. And I think you already know, you probably all know some people that totally zap your energy. You already know, they come to you and they have a sad, sad story to tell you and they will not stop until it's done. <laughs> and you already know that if you are in a happy mood afterwards, they will tell you, you just don't get it and they will give you another helping. Right? They want you to feel something that you're not willing to feel. Why? Because you're having a good day, the sun is shining and it's almost 90 degrees, it's an awesome day. Why do I now have to be miserable? Right? And that whole thing in how we share our stories, how we bring um, how we bring our lives into the lives of others, how we connect with each other, what we expect and what we have the right to expect from somebody else, that really needs some thinking. Right, so that we actually get what we need, and sometimes it's as easy as saying, "You know what? Um, I have a very tough day today. I am a hundred percent sure. Let's make that ninety-eight percent sure that if I tell you how I'm feeling because you asked, I will be a sobbing mess. Is that okay for you?" <laughs> and they may say yes, and they may say no. But you ask for permission before you tell them. Say, look, I'm so happy for you. Can I just share something with you? My apartment burned down and I don't even know what to feel right now. And, you know, I would love to tell you all about it, but I can tell you it's not going to be pretty. Is that okay? Or do you have the time? Ask them for permission and see if it comes, is given freely or just because it would be rude to say no. And you will always get what you need because they will give you what they can. And that usually feels very satisfying, right? Some people, all they need to do is they need to put your hand on your shoulder. I've seen this a lot with my, with my guys. They just pet you on the back and you know, they got it. So I got you brother, pet you on the back, done, right? In some sports, they hit you over the helmet. They know you hurt, right? And in others, they need to talk it all out. But we got to, that personal connection doesn't come, that comes when people have a mutual agreement to share in a story in a way that works for both sides. And you will never be rejected. And they will never switch topics because whatever. I hope that's helpful. And it's helpful to sometimes watch how other people do this, how on TV, for example, they moderate this the entire time. They murder this all the time. They get somebody in with a sub story. They get somebody in with a top story. They get whatever in. And you see, they will always end on a high note. And there's a reason for that. Because they take people through the journey. And then they drop them off again at a place where they can continue to live. Does that make sense? I just... Can I share really quick about the uh, conspiracy theorist? I googled uh, there are ways how to talk to them, one person at a time, of course, <laughs> and just uh, do whatever Here, I can. Here's, here's how I talk to them. I say, I am so disappointed in you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't even <laughs> argue. <laughs> I am so disappointed. Mm -hmm. and, if, and, and, there is, and that's just how I feel. I'm not going to argue with them why they're wrong. 
That's not why they, that they, they don't want to know that. But I tell them that they're extremely disappointing. And when it, they don't stop, I'm sorry for needing water, but I need water. When they don't stop, I will say, I expected so much more from you. And if they still don't stop, I will say, I have always thought of you much higher. <laughs> this is totally personal. Do not junk me with garbage like that. Okay. That's what you can, there's nothing argumentative. This is not head to head. This is like, you kidding me right now, right? Yeah. And you can say that. You okay. can absolutely. They, I believe in science and... Uh... I, I don't care if they believe in science or not. Just what the hell? If I tell you, wear a mask, wear a mask. Why? Because I don't want to get your germs. Don't tell me about somebody in China who had did whatever they did. I don't care. I'm disappointed that you would even think that. See, this is what I mean by empowerment. This is personal. You don't have to be better to get your way. You don't have to have all your arguments to have your way. You can just tell them how this is for you. Yeah, yeah, understand. People are pretty disciplined here. I'm like more talking about this, sending me all this, you know, information, so I'll start talking. Or, you know, that's... So I just... No, I don't yeah. believe it. I, I just believe in size. But disappointed in you. Yeah. <laughs> it might work too. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and don't argue, don't argue. It is simply a boundary you have and you don't have to defend that boundary. You don't have to tell people why you have it and have them argue okay. if you're right or wrong. It's your boundary and a story. You don't listen to conspiracy. You make your own decisions, right? I don't know, maybe some of the conspiracy theories are right. I have no way of knowing, neither do they. Exactly. Right? So I don't want to be bothered and that's the end of the story because I have a life to live. And you can do that. All of you can do that, right? And I would really encourage you to take that very seriously. And I don't, you don't need my encouragement, but maybe some applause, <laughs> right? Yeah. You can do this. And Joan, you let us know how this went, okay? You let us know. Well, we, we do want to know, right? Elaine, let us know. Now, let us know. That's right, let us know. We want to know. You know, because this is your opportunity to do something that's, that's right for you. Um, it is true that if we don't speak about certain things, then certain information will not find its way to us. Okay. And the social media world, for sure. Um, I do not post certain things. So certain information never found its way to me. And we got to be mindful of that too. You know, if we open a can of worms, we will probably... <laughs> you know, we better get a get a fishing rope, <laughs> or or we just you know are stuck with the crawlers. Um, so yeah, you may disagree, but find your way, and that's why you're all in this. You know, that's why you all are coming to the calls. That's why you all are not quitting, not giving up. You all want to find a way to move forward and you will you already are i'm proud of you thank you Ingrid. thank you very much all right thank you yeah i'm gonna head out um i think we said our last words and i see you guys next week um it if there is a change in time i should know by monday okay so just put your email um i just have to figure it out if if i'm fit enough on tuesday i think i will be but I'm just, just be mindful of that. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday and we'll figure out from there. Okay. My heart goes out to all of you. You're amazing. Thank you for all your sharing. And I know that it's very difficult for each and every one of you and you're here. So thank you for doing that. All right. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye now. Bye. Bye.